Oh, well, good evening to all of you. You glad to be here tonight? What a blessing. We are here to lift up the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Night number three in where else but Pinecraft, Florida. Isn't it just beautiful weather? Enjoying it immensely, and what a great, great blessing to enjoy God's wonderful creation. We're looking forward to another night of just worship. Daniel Glick Band will kick us off here tonight. Then our family will come and share a few songs, and then the Fisher family uh, will follow that. And then uh, we'll have a brief uh, message here tonight, and then the Daniel Glick Band will come back and close us out uh, at the end. That's kind of the order of... Uh, the service here tonight. So we welcome you here tonight. We're so glad you're here. And let us come before the Lord in prayer, shall we? Father, it is in the mighty name of Jesus that we do pray tonight. We pray in that name because, God, you have given your Son a name, according to the Bible, a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. So we thank you for this great opportunity tonight to once again lift you up, exalt you, Jesus, because you are the one, that name that is above every name. So help us, O oh God, each one that takes part here tonight, whether from the stage or whether in the audience, Lord, all together, that we would all open our hearts to you to say, Holy Spirit, speak to us here tonight, encourage us here tonight, minister to our hearts. Father, we be careful to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And we do want to thank you for the freedom that we have to meet out the outdoors in this place here tonight. We honor you as our special guest of honor here tonight. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen, amen and amen. Well, this group has been here quite a few times. We have so enjoyed over the years to work with Daniel and his wife, Emma Lynn, Brother Dan, Brother J.R., and their families, uh, we are so grateful just to, you know, it's, it's always say with these groups, it's one thing when you have uh, great, talented musicians and you hear harmony and all of that, but then when the anointing is flowing through that, that tops everything, when you sense the anointing of God. And we have, we've seen that and sensed that in this group, and we're so grateful. Would you welcome the Daniel Glick Band here tonight?
Thank you. Yeah, we sure are blessed to be here tonight in such a beautiful evening, and especially with the Gospel Express team. I'm looking forward to a message tonight, and we always enjoy when we can partner up with, with Gospel Express and the Millers, and uh, it's just always a, a good time when we're together. Um, so yeah, we hope you're, you're blessed tonight by our singing. Um, we're here to glorify Christ, and we want our prayer always is that you would be touched and that you'd be drawn closer to Christ and not to us. It's not about us up here. It's, it, these, these songs that we sing, um, they're really about the Lord. Uh, so this next song is called Love Like Rain. It's a song we recorded a few albums back. What could he want with someone like me? What could he want? Someone like me Empty and broken on my knees But through my sorrow, guilt and shame I heard His voice calling my name Love like rain How many of you remember when you experienced the love of Christ for the first time? When you were born again? I, I'll never forget that moment when I was 17 and a half years old, crying out to the Lord from my bedroom. Um, he changed my heart that night and started redeeming the things in my past, started changing me. At the time, I was in pornography and things like that. And uh, This next song is called, I've Been Changed. And I, I just, I was so grateful that this is a song I can sing and it, it's real. It's real in my heart. And it, it can be real for you too if it's not. But I trust for many of you, I, I believe it is. But um, have you been changed?
Thank you. We're going to share one more song here for now. Then uh, I guess towards the end there we'll get to share a few more. My wife and the children will be up for that set as well. This is a song that we did on our last album. It's called I Went Under the Blood.
Wow. How many of you tonight? That it got all over me when I got under the blood. Is that true for you tonight? Give a wave offering. It is. Come on. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ, without it, the Bible says there's no forgiveness or remission for our sins. I don't know if we understand. I mean, I hope we do. The magnitude of the depth of the power of the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he shed on the cross for you and for me. That was spotless blood from heaven. Do you know that? It wasn't earthly blood. Now, if we understand that, Joseph was not the father. Who was the father of Jesus? Huh? The Holy Ghost. Do you know that? The Bible says that. It says that. Impregnated with the Holy Ghost. That was from heaven. Why? It had to be heavenly blood to wash our sins away. It could not be an earthly father. Because everyone had sin. We're all tainted by sin. It needed to be sinless, spotless blood to wash our sins white as snow. And that's how it was with Jesus there at the cross. God bless you, Daniel, Emmeline, uh, J.R., Dan, Eugene. Eugene became a part of the Daniel Glick, not trio, but whoever, but my, my, what a blessing. These young people have been such an inspiration to so many. They've been a great inspiration to me. Privileged last month of working together, ministering together in the country of Uganda, Africa. Something we are not going to forget. Would you welcome the Millers to share here tonight? toward the sun i have journeyed through the night and the battle now is won there's a new song in my heart there's a new day dawning bright oh i'm turning to the light and not so
Hey, worship along with us tonight if you know the songs. We want to praise the Lord together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. Our Father, who art in heaven, the rocks cry out your fame. Come and let your glory, come and let your glory fall. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven god give us new every morning Mercy as daily bread. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us with your hand. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, we pray. Sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. For the kingdom is yours and the power. And the glory forever, amen. For the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory forever, amen. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Every heart proclaim the mercy of your name, on earth as it is in heaven. Well, we didn't really talk about uh, how we're going to do this, but uh, we neglected to do any sort of introduction last night, and that was just a lack of planning on our part. But also, uh, for me, it's okay because I don't feel it's super important about who we are, but who we're representing, and that is Christ. And that's really my heart tonight, and our heart as um, teams that are singing here is that his name is lifted up through the gifts he has given us in music and the abilities that we've been entrusted with to steward for him. And speaking of that... I think, well, actually, I don't want to neglect it again. Uh, I'm Eugene, this is Grace, this is Kyle, and Derek, we're siblings, uh, and we're part of the Miller family. Uh, our dad, Dave, is running sound, he'd be the director at Gospel Express, and our mom is back here manning their recording table, um, doing a great job with that. So we are honored to be their children, and honored to have them as parents. And uh, we enjoy singing together, and they do some singing with us, but not a whole lot. Um, we enjoy singing as siblings. And um, as I was saying, kind of back to that thing of gifts and talents and things we've been entrusted with, I'm challenged with when the Lord gives me something, whether it's a talent, gift, ability in uh, business, in ministry, in church, in family, in relationships, how am I stewarding that gift? 
I think of the parable of the talents. One was given one, one given five, one given ten. Like the different amounts, right? I don't think those amounts are correct, but irrelevant right now. Who was faithful with little was given more. And who was not faithful, that was even taken away from him. So what has God given me? God has given each of us a gift, a call, a passion, a purpose. What am I doing with that opportunity in my life? If we really think, God, what is that? Maybe some of us haven't found it yet. Maybe some of us don't know what that is yet. Keep seeking the heart of God and that will be made clear to you. What is my purpose? What is my passion? What am I burdened about? What makes me cry? What makes me laugh? We need to be living life on purpose. Often we can just coast through our week, coast through our happenings and things going on without really thinking intentionally about any of it. But the reality is the Lord is coming back and he's coming for a bride that's pure and a bride that is living for him. So if I'm not that pure bride now, what would it take in my life, in my routine to make that a reality? He has called me higher. I could just sit, I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence. And I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. could be safe, oh, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home, never let these walls down, but you have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Will you lead me? And I could hold on, I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. And I could be safe, oh, I could be safe here in your
Hey Amen. It is really good to be here with you all tonight. Thank you all for coming out and uh, just worshiping with us. We pray it can be encouragement to you and an inspiration to you uh, in some way. Um, I don't know all of you, um, and you may not know us, but that's not really super important. But I do know that each one of you that are here are going through something in your life and have a story, have a journey that you're walking right now. And this next song talks a little bit about trials in our life and hard things in our life that we don't understand. And we have a choice to make when we go through those times and through those valleys, if we're going to lift our eyes to heaven or if we're going to look at the circumstances around us. And I'm, I've been challenged with that. I, know, I don't know what you may have walked through this past year or recently in your life or what you might be going through right now. But I know just uh, last week or a couple weeks ago marked one year that one of my best friends passed away in a motorcycle accident. And those are things that we don't understand. I have some friends here and people I know here that have lost very dear loved ones recently. And, and death is something that's really hard. Loss is really hard. I don't understand it, how to go through something like that. But I do know whatever you're going through tonight, I want you to know that Jesus cares and he knows what you're going through and he, wanna, he wants to walk with you through it. And what he did on the cross for us, I'm so thankful now more than ever for the hope that we have in Jesus that he gave his life, that we can one day see those loved ones again. And even if you haven't experienced maybe loss or death, there's things that I know you're going through that are hard in your life that you may have just been walking through or that you're walking through right now and you don't understand. You don't see the other side yet. But I promise you that God has a plan for your life, for your story, and it matters to him. And I just want to encourage you that he cares about it and he wants to walk with you through it. And that no matter what we face in life, um, I I've been challenged with that there's a line in this song that says, more than healing, more than answers, more than healing, more than anything, God, your presence is enough. Is his presence and his goodness enough in my life? Is what he did on the cross for me enough? That even if he never did another thing for me, I have hope and I have eternal destiny ahead of me. That I can not only have security for myself, but I can believe that I can see those loved ones again. And I encourage you with that tonight, whatever you're walking through, that you would lift your eyes to heaven and remember where your help comes from. And remember that Jesus is with you every step of the way. I've never asked these questions. I've never felt so broken. Oh God, what do I do now? I've never cried this away. I've never seen such pain. Oh God. What do I do now? But even here, even now, I lift my eyes to heaven and remember I am loved. I lift these weary hands and let my Father pick me up. More than answers, more than healing, God, your presence is enough. I lift my eyes to heaven and remember you're still where my help comes from. All my fears came true, but they're no match for you. Come and hold me now And be my prince of peace Share my suffering Oh God, come and hold me now I lift my eyes to heaven And remember I am loved I lift these weary hands And let my Father pick me up more than answers, more than healing, God, your presence is enough. I lift my eyes to heaven and remember you're still where my help comes from. If you are near to the brokenhearted, then you are here with me. You take my sorrow inside your hands and you turn it to victory. If you are near to the brokenhearted, then you are here with me. You take my sorrow inside your hands and you turn it to victory. I lift my eyes to heaven and remember I am loved. 
I lift these weary hands and let my Father pick me up. More than answers, more than healing, God, your presence is enough. I lift my eyes to heaven and remember you're still where my help comes from. You're still where my help comes from. We were waiting without hope and without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died praise the Father praise the Son Praise forever to the King of Kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. And by His blood and in His name, and in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me.
And the church said, Amen. He is the King of Kings. You know, sometimes we hear about kings in the world, but Jesus Christ is the King. He is the King of all kings. He is the resurrected one. I'm so grateful tonight that my Savior is not dead. You know, the resurrection is what separates Christianity from all other religions, is it not? Other people, you know, Muhammad and Buddhists and all of those, you know, they're, they're gone. But Jesus is not dead. He is risen. And he is the King of Kings. In fact, he's coming soon. The soon coming King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. We are very excited. I'm not sure if, if us or them are the most excited, but that's up to the Lord. But we are very grateful for this family, Mike and Vernon, their children. We're so blessed to get to know them. Would you again welcome the Fisher family here tonight? Yes, amen. He is here. The Holy Spirit. This is one of my favorite songs because the Holy Spirit is, is, is so precious. You know, when you become a, a born-again child of God, this Holy Spirit comes to live within you. And wherever you go, that Spirit of God goes with you. And this song talks about, you know, sometimes we think the Holy Spirit is, is, is so far out there we, could, we, we hardly understand. This song talks about the Holy Spirit is here. You can touch him. And if you reach out in faith tonight, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart. You will never be the same. What a blessing. Yes, yeah, so we are privileged to be here. It's an honor to be here. Uh, we, are, we are, like Dave said, we're brand new at this, so bear with us. Last night we hit some pretty rocky spots, but I think we got through it all right. So thank you for being understanding. Uh, my name is Mike Fisher. My wife on the far left here is Verna. We're from Withville, Virginia. We've been married about 26 years. Unbelievable, but it's true. Eric is in the center. He's 24. Caleb is 19. Austin is 17. Harmony is 9. And Kimberly is 8. And we love to sing and we want to worship tonight. Watch the curves of hills of time. 
Savior that will guide us till we reach that crystal shore where the angels wait to join us in that praise next song is a is a song about heaven it's an old song it's a song that uh, we've been singing for years and years and it talks some about the glories of heaven but I was thinking recently so we think about heaven and the land beyond a lot of times we think about how beautiful heaven will be and I believe it will be beautiful we talk about the, the Bible talks about streets of gold it talks about walls of Jasper and things that almost blow our 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 minds sometimes as we think of that but you know as you as you stop and think about how beautiful heaven is shouldn't the main reason for wanting to go to heaven your the the thing that you forward the, the thing that you look forward to the most is should be seeing Jesus Christ and just to be in the presence of Jesus Christ being in the presence of God the Father and experiencing love like we don't know here on earth so let's, uh, as we think about heaven, it's okay to think about how beautiful heaven will be, but think about being in the presence of Jesus Christ throughout endless ages. I want to stroll over heaven. If I surveyed all the good things that come to me from above, if I could count all the blessings storehouse of love I simply ask for the favor of him beyond mortal land and I'm sure that he would grant it again I want to stroll over heaven 
Okay, we'll do one more song and then we'll turn it over to Dave. Blessing. Thank you, brother. Um, these very, very special songs, uh, some of my very favorites that they've, been, that they've been singing. What a blessing to the glory of God. Um, tonight I think of a story. Last night the storyteller was here, John Schmidt. And if you uh, missed him, but let me see. Berkey Square, Thursday night. I think, me, John. But I'm reminded this is a story. Let me see, what did John say about this is a story? But in German, we saw du Storia, du Storia, meaning you weren't telling the truth. But this is a, anyhow, this is all in story, and then, but anyhow, this is in story. And uh, the story is of somebody that, was in heaven, and um, they were also on the Johnstown flood, which was about 1889. Huge flood in Johnstown, PA. And so one time, there was an opportunity to give testimony and to share. So he got up, and as he was getting up to share about the great Johnstown flood, to tell all the people about it, somebody went up and whispered in his ear and said, by the way, just so you know, Noah is in the audience today. So anyhow, I don't know if his flood story went out the door or what. But uh, why do I say that tonight? Because it's not Noah, but he's also quite a bit older than I am. My dad is in the audience tonight. 
I'm so challenged and delighted, inspired that my dad is here. We didn't know if dad was going to make it to be here. Last month, dad had his 97th birthday. Would you welcome my dad? He's sitting out here on a golf cart. He can see me. I uh, had him move around instead of over here so that I could look at him. I love him so much. I'm going to tell you tonight, friend, as I was preparing for this evening, I would not be here, I don't believe I would be here tonight if it wouldn't be for a dad that loved me and forgave me when I was unlovable and disrespectful. But he kept loving me and forgiving and showing love to me. This time I remember watching Daddy cry after I left home. Nelson, please come home. But my heart had become hardened. And I watched my daddy cry as he walked away. It was in town. But I made up my mind. Here's what I want to do. Evil companions corrupt good morals and the morals that I've been taught, I didn't have anymore. But my daddy, mama, he kept forgiving. Even though how tough and how hard it was for them to see the lifestyle. Some of you are sitting here tonight with parents, with teenagers, grandchildren, children. And maybe tonight your heart goes out. Not everything is just the way that you want to see it. But my daddy, I didn't ask for an update. But I know there's 12 of us children. I know there's 64 grand. And last time I counted, I know, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe Aunt Nancy can tell me or my sister-in-law Catherine, but I think it's around 180-some great, and I don't know, is it 40-some great, great, I'm just, it's in the ballpark, right Nancy, it's in the ballpark. He loves every one of them. They don't all look alike. They don't all dress alike. But I can take any one of my grands. Any one of the grands could go to my daddy. Like yesterday, taking my grand, which is his great, and to see him hug and to see him love her. It's called unconditional love. That's what Jesus has for you and for me. He says, I love you. He keeps forgiving. How often? As often as is necessary. And he asks us that we would forgive. And my daddy, I love him so much. I shared about him the other night. That when I came to know Jesus, in 1974, you know, it was at a singing like here, but just a half mile from here. We were singing on a Saturday night when my older brother took me because he had a burden for my soul. Sarah had become a Christian three months earlier. She was praying for me, that little baby. But that night, I'm not going to go into detail, but that evening, as people were singing and testifying, like these here tonight, Something began to tug on my heart to say, these people actually have a joy. They are happy and they're not drinking. They're not under drugs. But something is different about these people. Hello, church. And it really went inside of my heart. It convicted me so much. I was a drinker to my shame. You know, I recall my daddy coming to a jail to bail me. And I was not living at home. And I was so ashamed. My daddy. Why is he even doing this? I didn't understand love like I do now. 
but I was still his son. And he still loved me. We didn't say a word because I didn't know what to say. I was so ashamed. But on that night, January the 5th, 1974, the Holy Spirit began to work on my life to convict me of sin. I remember leaving that night and telling Sarah I don't feel good. She knew what was going on. <laughs> she knew because she'd been praying that God would convict me through the Holy Spirit to draw me to him. She didn't talk about the Lord to me. She knew better. She knew I would say, quit. That's it. I don't want to hear it. Didn't have her Bible open in front of me, but she loved Jesus. Two days later, driving down the highway to go with my brother who was there that night, who was up there singing. In fact, some of you know the story. He asked me to go up and sing a song with him. I didn't want to do it. But he begged me, please. So we sang, Steal Away and Pray, an old Lubin brother song. But that night, I saw joy. I saw peace. I remember some of the people that were there singing that night. And I'm like, I, this, is, this is really unusual. Anyhow, on, Saturday, on, Sunday, on Monday morning, that was Saturday night, on Monday morning, driving down Beneva to 41 to head to Venice, tell my brother pour concrete, hangover, late as usual, Monday morning, always the same. But that morning, something happened. And I pulled beside the highway, right where Beneva and 41 come together. I couldn't see to drive. And I cried out to Jesus. I said, Jesus, what I saw Saturday night, that's what I want. Because I'm empty. I'm guilty. I didn't know what to say, but I knew I was a sinner. I knew I needed Jesus. I'd been told, mom and dad, different ones, my brother, who had such a burden for my soul, my older brother. <laughs> I prayed. If something happened to me that morning and the peace of God came all over me. I was weeping. I was crying. I was trying to drive. I'm sure people were like, what's going on? Because I was like, anyhow, I'm not, I, it's not really what I was going. But I headed down the highway to Venice. My brother was pouring concrete and he was already on his knees, what you call troweling the concrete. We used to actually do that in 74, 3, 2, when I lived here. He was on his knees, but that morning I remember walking up and saying, Paul, he was still on his knees. I said, Paul, I have something to tell you. He got up off from that, what do you call it? The board, whatever you call it, kneel at the board. He got up and I said, Paul, a little bit ago, on the way down here, something happened to me. I can't explain it. But something is happening inside of me. He knew right away. And for the first time, we embraced that I ever remember. And I told him I loved him and I thanked him for the investment that he made and the things I did against him when he was trying to witness to me. Anyhow, there began the journey of life. Really, truly, the journey of life began right then. And I ask you this evening, are you on that journey knowing Christ as our Savior? That morning I found the peace of God, the joy of God, the hope of God. I didn't understand then, but I know that morning he wrote my name in the book of life in heaven. That he washed me with his precious blood. I want to ask you this evening, do you know, do you know this evening that your name is in the book of life? That you've been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus. Can you go back when the enemy tempts you and say, no, 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 back there. Jesus came into my, even a time frame of life. You may know the day, but maybe you know a time frame. That's very important. To be able to understand and to realize that. Um, but tonight, there's a scripture that I want to read. And by the way, uh, I'll just share this. My Aunt Nancy's sitting here. That's my dad's younger sister. I think she's turning, what, 92 on Friday or I think 92. Spent over 50 years in the country of Belize, Central America, as a missionary. One of the first Amish girls to leave and go into missionary work of that kind of work. She has been a tremendous inspiration to me and to all of our family. Thank you, Miss Nancy. I bless you so much. 
When she left Belize to come back, I know her heart was broken because that was her life. But we said, Nancy, God has a purpose for you in the U.S. And she has taken up that purpose to be a friend to others and to pray with others and to share with others. My mama had her home going a little over nine years ago. You didn't hear me talk about mom. But if you were here when I shared testimony, I was sharing how I went to mom and dad after I got saved. Maybe about, I don't know, six months. It was the Gospel Echoes and we were singing somewhere. And that's another glory story that I don't have time to go into tonight. But I remember that night very clearly when I made a list of so many people to my shame. When Jesus came in my life, the Holy Spirit said, now it's reconciliation time. You've hurt many people. You've disappointed many people. Will you go to them and say, I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? I said, yes, Lord. I don't know where a lot of these people are, but I made a list. First ones was my own sibling, brothers and sisters, and then it was my dad and my mom were there. I remember going to dad and mom that night and saying to them, ask mama if she can forgive me, because I knew that mama was praying a lot for me, along with dad. And mom began to cry, and she said, I almost gave up on you, thought you'd never change. I said, mama, thank you that you kept praying. Then I did something I never did. I wasn't going to share this, but it's for somebody tonight. And then I planted a kiss on her cheek. Never done that. You know, when the power of God comes in, he takes us beyond traditions and cultures. And he has us do what Jesus would do. Come on, church. Because we weren't used to that. And I hugged my mama, told her I loved her. My daddy was not far away, and I went to him and Ask him for forgiveness. My daddy said, I forgive you. And I remember telling my dad I loved him. And my daddy said, I love you. And I can be honest tonight. My daddy said, Nelson, I didn't do you boys the way I should have. I didn't do you all things the way I should have. Can you forgive me? <laughs> and the reconciliation was underway. 1984, when this ministry began, Dad was one of the few that I called to say, would you pray about God's direction to begin this ministry? Because I knew where his heart was. He was praying for us. And a couple days later, I called him. He said, yeah, he clops about right for so do. I said, all right, English. <laughs> Dad said, yes, I think that's a good thing, and I'm with you. I stand with you. An inspiration through the years, through the glory of God. I really wasn't going to be sharing all that, but what I really wanted to share, and I don't have that much time left, but really the Lord was laying on my heart to share tonight is, the Babylonians were captivity, Psalm 137. And it says there that, they hung, hung their harps upon the willows, carried away in captivity. And it said, they were asked to sing a song. They said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And it said they wept. I wonder how many tonight are going through. You know, it says they hung their harps upon the willows. We have difficulties, trials, circumstances, challenges. Widows, widowers here tonight. I see my sister-in-law, Catherine. My brother had his home going November a year ago, younger than me, cancer. The challenges and things that we face, these that were in captivity, they said, how can we go on? The challenger against it, it's a new place, it's new people, it's new circumstances, it's new surroundings. How can I continue to move forward? The song had gone out of their life. Has the song ever gone out of your life? I mean, where you got discouraged, disappointed, disillusioned, and you say, can he really on gay desolate? Can he on get a Ike Bush too? He wears the Epstevaris anymore. Can I really go forward? The enemy number one tool is discouragement. If I can discourage you, there's no hope. Look what's happened. Even look at your past. 
My friend, when you come to Jesus Christ, he covers the past with his precious blood so that we can move ahead and let go of the past and hold on to the future. There's things we remember, but the Bible says God does not remember our sins against us anymore. But we remember where he brought us from and we're going. But what about you this evening? Maybe trial, difficulty that you're facing, that you're going through. Somebody came up last night was sharing about difficulty. It can be church difficulty. It can be family situations. It can be on the job. It can be physical infirmities. But the things and the challenges we face are very, very real. And today we live in a world with a lot of hopelessness today. I heard President Biden say not long ago, 17 military people every day commit suicide. 17 a day. Every day. Suicide is rising among young people aged 13 to 25 than it's ever been before. Why? Hopelessness. Purpose. What am I here for? Why am I here? Hebrews chapter 12. After all the faith, heroes of faith, who had many failed, but they repented. Heroes of faith. Would our name be there? Think of it. And then in chapter 12, he says, Now, knowing we have all this cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight, every sin, everything that holds us back, and run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, in the midst of all the pain, the agony, the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and is at the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, Consider Jesus, Him, unless you become discouraged and lose hope. Verse 3. How is your hope tonight? Some discouraging you? He said, lay aside, put it away. And keep moving forward. As I was preparing this message today, I got a call and I'm like, I don't know if I want to go in there tonight. Why? Because something was going on that the song was kind of going out. I need to get the back end of the motor home. Just get alone and say, Jesus, you got to help me. I can't go through with this. Jesus on the cross missed all the pain and agony. He was thinking of others. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. I'm going to take you home with me. John, take care of mom. That is such a challenge to me. To continuing to contribute to the hope, the help, the joy of others. While our own hearts are broken, challenged, going through difficulty. The only way is to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Or we become bitter and angry and unforgiving. Could we bow our heads? If we're going to keep running the race, we can't do it without an intimate relationship with Jesus. Know Him as our Savior. And then ask Jesus to give us a hunger and a thirst for Him. A hunger and a thirst for righteousness, holiness, godliness. And let him build a passion in our lives. We're created for Jesus to flow through us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. That what he pours in can be poured out and become spiritual nourishment for others. Lord Jesus, tonight, maybe mother, father, mom, dads, young people. There'd be some that feel discouraged, rejected, forsaken, betrayed. Lord, you felt all of that more. Lord, I ask, would you encourage them tonight through the Holy Spirit to take our eyes off. Lord, that is, for me, Lord, it's, it's just, I keep looking at the circumstance. Jesus, help me, help us to look to you, Jesus, and not to the circumstances. And to lay those things aside and look to you and ask for grace, courage, strength. 
I pray for those right now, God, that are walking through valleys and valleys of humiliation. That tonight they would just say, Jesus, I need your help. I need your grace. I need your strength to walk through this so that your joy would remain in my life. Your peace would remain in my life. Take a moment and pray. Talk to Jesus. Tell him to say, Jesus, I need your help right now. And be a single person, young, whoever you are. Lord, I need your help. Just tell him. Lord, I pray for each person that is praying. Would you increase their faith? To help and understand that you've heard, you are answering that prayer. You will help them, Lord, as they walk by faith, through grace, Lord. Lord, may you be glorified. We give you the praise, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Could you... By the way, that's my phone, just in case you're wondering... My Nigerian brother who should be in bed. Anyhow. I may the Lord's calling your number tonight. What I mean is spiritually. And so, again, tonight if God is, if the Lord is speaking to you this evening, that you would say, yes, Jesus. And by the way, for reconciliation, I have about two minutes left. If you need to go to someone... Young people, mom or dad, to say words like, I was wrong, I'm sorry, or can you forgive me? Lead the way. Don't wait. Don't wait. Be a peacemaker. Go to others. You'll be eternally grateful. Go according to this. And say, Jesus, help me. Was it easy to go to dad? It was very hard. But I'm ever so grateful because God has used that relationship through the years. Year after day after day. I pray for dad all the time. He prays for us, prays for me. And we don't shake hands. We we do this. <laughs> That's because of Jesus. God helps us to do that. Don't wait till it's too late. Take the initiative. Amen. Would you just sing tonight? When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way while we do His good will. He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Would you welcome the Daniel Glick Trio here this evening?
you know, I think my favorite part of that whole song is Jesus said, if I fear, I should come to him. You know, just the, the friendship of the Holy Spirit, and our, that's the opportunity to have a relationship with Christ. Uh, he's there for us everywhere we go. All right, the girls, I'm just going to do a quick introduction here. Many of you have heard us before, I believe, and probably know us, but uh, for those of you who maybe have never heard us, don't know our names, Junior Fisher to my right playing the electric guitar. Would you make Junior welcome tonight? The junior is our sound guy usually uh, at all the events that we do. He does a phenomenal job at it. Um, just a great guy to have on our team. Dan Esch to my left, playing the piano, also plays harmonica. Uh, you all, many of you all know Dan and Amanda. Uh, would you make Dan welcome tonight? Thank you. Thanks, Dan, for it's been a it's a real privilege to have him on the team as well. Uh, Melody is my oldest daughter. She is eight years old. Um, Shantae is six years old, and then Faith is four years old, just about four. Three. Three. Yeah, she, she turns four in a couple weeks. And then Olivia is, turns a year old in next week, right? March the 2nd. All right. Um, so, yeah, we have a family of girls. My wife, Emma Lynn, uh, she, we've been married for, it'll be 10 years this year. So we've been very blessed. Um, she's a homeschool mom. Uh, I myself have a heating and air conditioning business back home. And, uh, yeah, God has very, been very faithful to us um, through work and through also having opportunity uh, to do this and to sing and use our gift to glorify Christ. Uh, so we're going to keep going here. Uh, the next song the girls like to sing, I uh, did on a, not the last album, the one before that, called No, Not One. Are you ready, girls? All right.
I'm going to share a song y'all heard before this evening. It's called He Is Here. I'm just grateful that when the Father, when Christ, when He died on the cross, and when He resurrected and went back to the went back to heaven, He left us His Holy Spirit. He is always with us. Keep deep. This is a song we have on our last recording, and we have seven recordings over there, and there's also a couple, or one clock chip, I guess, and some books there. My wife is an author. She's written a book over there, uh, so feel free to stop by at our table after we're done, if you wish. He is here. share two more songs with you this evening. This next song is an old Amos Raber song. He wrote this song back when he was with Gospel Express. Nelson, I'm sure you remember the song, It Is Done. You helped sing. This is a, yeah. So the girls, this is a song that we, we just always enjoyed and, and uh, the girls especially like the song. And so we said when we're doing another, our next album, they're going to sing this song. And so Melody and Shanti are going to share the verses and we're going to join in the chorus. It Is Done. Key of B flat.
going to share one more song uh, that's on our last album, our last recording back there. This song is called We'll All Be There. And I just love the song because, you know, when we get to heaven, we'll all be there. Everyone who loves Jesus, even the ones that, you know, the reality is not everybody will be there in this world. In fact, more won't be there than that will be. But when we get there, it will be as if we're all there. I'm convinced of that. So tonight, I just want to, do you know Jesus? Have you made him Lord of your life? Will you be there? When the last day shall come And the road shall be cold When the saints meet their Savior in the air When the pilgrim and stranger Praise the Lord. The church say amen. amen. Wow, girls, thank you so much. Okay, sing along with us. Sing the wondrous love of St. Jesus. Sing his mercy and his everybody. Sing the mansions bright and blessed. He'll Then be true and faithful. 
life is over, I fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I fly away, everybody. Oh, I'll fly away. I fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah. Just a few Just a moment. I want you to I want to hear you sing. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. In the morning when I die. Wow, that is wonderful. Sing it one more time now. Ready? Oh, Give the Lord a clap offering of praise. He alone is worthy. Would you lead us in prayer tonight, please? Appreciate it, brother. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness, your goodness to us. Father, yes, we thank Jesus. you for life. Thank you, God, for the words that were shared tonight through Nelson. Father, I pray that would bear much fruit, Lord, and that there would be relationships rec reconciled. Father, that Lord, there would be a spirit of forgiveness among us, yes, Lord, that we would, if there's amends that need to take place and people that need to forgive each other, God, I pray that could happen tonight. Yes, and Father, we thank you for your forgiveness, for your yes, Jesus. son Jesus, for giving us your life and for being a friend to us, for leaving us your Holy Spirit to guide us. And God, I pray you would guide each one. And uh, Lord, we ask that you would be with us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn around, greet a few people, wish them God's blessing. And uh, have some fellowship. You're dismissed. Hope to see you tomorrow evening, Lord willing.